Do you want to see how I made this artwork of Bay from Hall Alive? Well, stick around. I'll show you how. So we are starting off with the head, as we always do. I wanted it to be kind of almost like a movie poster. Very small character, but very tall canvas. And that wasn't how I started out wanting it, but it ended up becoming that because I thought, you know, that'd look cool. So in terms of the pose, I kind of just had a, a reference of somebody like hugging a beach ball. And I was like, yeah, I'll do that. So that was kind of the whole goal here was to just replicate what I saw, but then add my own touch to it. So we have the basic body shape here. And this is one where I kind of just winged it. Sometimes I do uh, I do base drawings and sometimes I don't. It, it really all depends on how confident I am with the pose. If I need to break it down into structure, I do. But if I don't, I just skip it. So that's the main idea, kind of just planning everything out. And in a weird way, I'm not sure why in the end I chose to have her be naked, but uh, it, it ended up kind of adding something to it, in my personal opinion. Something, uh, I'm not sure what that something was, but it definitely helped in my personal opinion. Um, if I would have drawn the swimsuit, it just kind of would have been boring. And I know that might be confusing to some. Why would it be boring? Well, it's just like kind of like, She's already hid by the the floaty itself, so there's kind of a, a little bit of piqued interest whenever it's just the floaty covering her. And we'll we'll see how that goes, but it definitely was something that I ended up deciding on later, and I think it was a good decision. Whether or not you agree, it's it's up for debate, you know. So I just really really enjoy. Um, drawing things with lots of motion and uh s patterns are what i love the most but this particular uh composition had a mix of the s pattern and the the line pattern so i basically had the clouds be tall leading to the character and i had the hair do a fluid motion with the tail to lead the eye on the character so the clouds lead back to the character and the hair and tail lead to the face and the chest which definitely helps improve the composition quite a bit. Compositions are a little bit tricky if you're not used to them, but um, they're they're relatively simple the more you practice them and the more you start to figure out what they're all about. They're, they're not too complicated, and over time you'll start to develop kind of a brain for it, meaning you'll do it by yourself without having to think about it. It, it becomes kind of a natural thing as you draw. It's one of those things that as you practice more, when things don't look right, you'll know what to do just by like instinct. It's kind, it's kind of nuts. Um, the first time I noticed it started happening was about a year ago. I'm like, oh, I guess I can just do composition now. And it took some practice, but eventually I just got pretty good at it, in my personal opinion. Uh, people can disagree. It's, it's fine. But uh, we're doing very bright, saturated colors for this particular artwork. Because if you've been following me for a while, you'll know I love saturated colors i also love this character bay it's just one of those um characters that i really really like and i hope you will too so getting this to look artistic and not um not lewd was actually kind of uh difficult i wanted it to be more artsy than it was um kind of provocative if that's the correct word to use in terms of how I design things, my goal is never just um, risque. It's it's more how can I make it beautiful while at the same time get people's attention. And that can be tricky at times. So here we start to go to the clouds, and you'll notice that the clouds lead back to the character. It's also going to be following, uh, it's going to be hinting at the shading and where the light direction is. So you want your lights to all make sense, no matter if it's um, just a character or the background, it all has to work together. And now I'm starting to kind of plan out the rendering for the character, and I'm going to be using um, references for the light. So just kind of had to figure out where everything was going to be placed. Now, I will say the lighting on her arm didn't make much sense in looking at it now. But at the time, it like I was like, ah, it's pretty. But uh, yeah, that's basically uh, using some ad glow to kind of add some uh, kind of an orange hue to the skin. 
a little bit of blue and using the selection pen to select only what I want. That way I can kind of add color to it. So we're pretty much done planning it out now. Just some minor adjustments to make it look right. And then we're going to go straight into the line art, which is something that I really uh, enjoy doing. Sorry, I got the got a bit of allergies at the moment. Now we're adding some extra glow layers to kind of make it bright and beautiful. And we're going to do some small post-processing to kind of figure out everything. Put it all in one layer, adjustments, some lighting. I really went in depth with the planning of this sketch because I wanted the finished product to be really, really nice. So now we're just adding little details, flipping the canvas, making sure everything looks right. Some tonal curves kind of add some more blue to the artwork as well, kind of make it even more colorful. And that's the basic idea of the sketch. So now it's time to start going into uh, the fixes and the line art and the cleanup. So I use very thin lines for my line art because I like uh, precision and I want the rendering to stand out more than the lines do. And that is a personal preference of mine. It's not something that uh, you have to do yourself. If you prefer thicker lines or find them easier, it's okay to do that. I just personally use very thin lines. So we're kind of following the shape of the back, kind of outlining everything to make it look good. We are enhancing what is there in the sketch. That is the point of line art, making clean, enhanced version of what's already there and making it better. If your idea of what line art is is just adding smooth lines. It's it's not enough. It needs to have purpose. Lines are very complex, but they um they need to have a lot of thought put into them. And as you get there in time and start getting better, you'll start to understand how to place lines a bit better. It took me a long time, um years in fact. I think I've been doing line art this way for about ten years. So now it's getting really uh really easy for me. You'll notice a time skip. The reason why was I have issues sometimes where I forget to hit record. And that is my mistake. Sorry about that. It kind of happens. <laughs> so we're just adding some uh, some base colors to kind of get ready for the rendering. I'm using a very saturated red, but also not full on in the in the brightness and saturation because I want to use the um the shading or rendering to add more to it. Multicolored hair is a lot of fun to, to render, even though I'm kind of lazy with it. I basically just use a multiply layer so I can get both of it, both of the uh, colors. But that's kind of how it goes. So now we're going to start the rendering. Or we're going to add a background. I, I forgot I did the background first. Here we go. Now we're doing the rendering. Basically getting all the, the basic um, shadows first before I add a multiply layer on top of it. Just to kind of plan everything out. There we go. Adjusting the hue and saturation. That way I can get a more correct color. Again, I'm not sure why I lit up the arm that way, the way I did. It doesn't make any sense. but Oh well. And what's done is done, I guess. So now we're going to kind of adjust everything, make it look correct. Now we're doing the rendering of the hair. Um, I'm trying to get better at rendering hair. I feel my hair is kind of lacking personally. But um, you may like it, but I, I'm kind of iffy on how I do hair at the moment. I want to get better at it. Always room for improvement in your artwork. Always. There's always something you can learn or some stylization you can try. Um, continuous learning is part of art. It's like you should never feel satisfied with where you're at. You should always try to strive for more. At least that's my personal opinion. Chasing perfection is what art's all about. So now we're starting with kind of a blue layer on the clouds to kind of plan everything out, make it look soft and fluffy. Yeah. 
this was I was really proud of how I did the clouds in this particular artwork. I have uh, cloud brushes, but they aren't like great, so I have to like improvise with them and hope that I can figure it out with the G pen and the brushes themselves. So we have kind of the basic idea. We're gonna start adding blush here. Here pretty soon we're gonna add some like jet streams to the clouds, some add glow to the hair to kind of make everything like shining glow. There we go. Add glow brings so much to an artwork. It really brings the artwork to life. We're adding some post-processing with hue and saturation, tonal curve, color balance, getting it all taken care of. Some little effects in the water. And level correction, some overlay and hard light, and some chromatic abrasion. And that's how I did it. If you like this video, thank you like, at comment, Cooper White the Shield. Bell. Thank you so much. Bye. Rubeb Prismic. Prismatic, sorry. 420 Zidan. Emilin, Beer, Night Angel, Andy Scaldito, Shane, Roxa, Zaret, Dalton Lily, Fainer T. Hager, Tomps Double O, Zip, Matthew C., and Dallas Long. Thank you so much for supporting me on Patreon, guys. Bye.